So now I'm going to talk about um, the arthrokinematics and osteokinematics of the wrist and the hand. So the wrist has two degrees of freedom. It's got flexion, you see that? Yeah. Flexion and extension, and then what we call radial deviation and ulnar deviation. Flexion and extension um, is in the sagittal plane around a medial lateral axis, just the way we've talked about it at other joints. Um, radial deviation and ulnar deviation are basically akin to ab and adduction. It's a movement in the frontal plane around an anterior posterior axis. But remember I said we look at things a little differently at the hand and the wrist. Um, so um, instead of calling this abduction, we call that radial deviation, just moving towards the radius. And instead of calling this adduction, ADD, we call that ulnar deviation, or moving towards the ulna. I know in the trail guide book they use the terms wrist, abduction, and adduction. Those are not terms that any clinician I know uses. So you need to know radial deviation and ulnar deviation. The arthrokinematics of the, um, for the wrist, like I said, you have two joints. Uh, you have um, the radial carpal joint, that's the right way, radial carpal joint, and you have the mid carpal joint. And the movements of flexion and extension and um, ulnar and radial deviation, they're about, the range of motion numbers are split about equally. And that's a way that the wrist can um, have stability and mobility at the same time, splitting that range of motion between two different joints. So at the radial carpal joint, you have, um, it's actually the lunate, the convex lunate, moving on the concave end of the radius. And then at the mid-carpal joint, you have actually the uh, convex capitate moving now on the other part of the lunate, the concave part of the lunate. So for both cases, for both joints, it's going to be um, convex moving on concave. So for flexion, for the radial carpal joint, you'll have the convex lunate rolling in a palmar direction and sliding in a dorsal direction. For extension, at the radiocarpal joint, you'll have the lunate rolling in a dorsal direction and sliding in a palmar direction. At the midcarpal joint, for flexion, you'll have the convex capitate rolling in a palmar direction and sliding in a dorsal direction. And at the midcarpal joint, for extension, you'll have a Dorsal roll, dorsal roll of that convex capitate and a palmar slide of the convex capitate. For uh, radial and ulnar deviation, it's similar, just a little bit different. So for uh, radial deviation, at the radial carpal joint, you have this whole uh, proximal row rolling in a radial direction and sliding in an ulnar direction because it's still convex on concave. And then for ulnar deviation, you'd have that proximal row rolling in an ulnar direction and sliding in a radial direction. And then at the mid-carpal joint, you have the capitate um, rolling in a radial direction, sliding in an ulnar direction for radial deviation. And then for ulnar deviation, you have it rolling in a ulnar direction and sliding in a radial direction. So for all four joints, for both joints, radial carpal joint, um, and the mid-carpal joint, and really for flexion and extension, all the radial deviation, it's all convex on can concave. It's just different things that are moving. For the other, um, for the other joints, you have, um, leaving the thumb aside for a minute, you have at the CMC joints, you have not very much movement at the second and the third um, rays. Those are considered pretty solid. At the fourth and the fifth, you have a bit of flexion and extension. And then at the MCP joints, again, just concentrate on the fingers now, you have uh, flexion and extension, and you also have ab and adduction. At the MCP joints, and again, we're just talking about the second through the fifth um, digits, uh, we define ab and adduction as around that middle finger. So this is going to be abduction moving away. It's a little hard to do <laughs> independently. And then adduction moving towards. And Newman doesn't define this in the current edition, but I believe for the third finger, which also can deviate, um, that's defined as radial and ulnar deviation. So that third finger either moves towards the radial side, which you'd call radial deviation, or moves towards the ulnar side, which you'd call ulnar deviation. So again, at the MCP joints, you have flexion and extension. Um, and then you also have the ab and adduction. And then at the IP joints, um, both the PIP and the DIP, you have flexion and extension. And that's also true for the IP joint of the thumb.
for the MCP joints and the PIP joints, it's all concave and convex. All right, so it's all um, uh, slide and roll in the same direction. Okay, depending so if it's coming, if it's a if it's a flexion movement, then the roll is going to be in a Palmer direction, and the slide is also going to be in a Palmer direction. And then if it's extension, it's going to go um, in the opposite direction, in the dorsal direction, roll and slide in the same direction. Um, now the thumb is a little a little bit special. So if you can remember when we talked about when we talk about um, movements um, of the body, we talked about how you have the you have the sagittal plane, right, cutting yourself in half, and movements along the sagittal plane have a medial lateral axis. We talk about movements in the transverse or horizontal plane, which is usually kind of a rotation movement, and that's through uh, an, uh, superior inferior axis. And then we also talked about the frontal plane, right? So movements in the frontal plane occur around anterior posterior axis. The planes and the axes never change. Those are always the same. What does change on occasion is the way that the bones are orientated, and there's a couple joints where some movements happen in different planes than what we're used to. So we've already talked about that with the SC joint, and if you think about how your clavicle is, right, your clavicle is orientated completely opposite to the way most of your bones are. So it shouldn't be a surprise that these movements occur in different planes. Your thumb is also in a different plane than your fingers. It's kind of rotated in a different direction. So we define movements at the thumb a little bit differently. So at the thumb, uh, moving across the palm is defined as flexion. And moving away from the palm is defined as extension. And notice that in the anatomical position, you're kind of already in a bit of an extension. Um, and that, at the thumb, that flexion and extension is in the frontal plane around an anterior posterior axis. Abduction at the thumb is defined as movement away from the palm, okay, and that's going to be in the sagittal plane. Movement towards the palm is adduction, again in the sagittal plane, but still around a medial lateral axis. Um, we also talk about the thumb, we talk about opposition, which is a specific um, term referring to bringing the pads of the fifth and the first um, digit together, and reopposition is just returning to the previous position. Opposition or reopposition are not considered a separate degree of freedom because they're really made up of components of uh, flexion and um, abduction and then extension and adduction. So the other connects to the thumb are a little more complicated. The thumb is a, is a saddle joint. So what that means is that parts of the surface of the trapezium and the metacarpal are convex and parts are concave. So you can think of that trapezium as being a saddle. Um, it's actually concave in kind of the longitudinal direction. So for abduction, so moving away from the palm, that's going to be concave moving on convex. Okay, so the concave part of the, uh, the convex, I'm sorry, the convex part, the, uh, the metacarpal is convex, the trapezium part is concave. So it's convex moving on concave. Um, so it's going to be uh, a roll in one direction and a slide in the opposite direction. Um, the roll is going palmarily and the slide is going dorsally. And then for flexion and extension, it's going to be um, concave on convex. So the concave part of the uh, metacarpal moving on the convex part of the trapezium. And it's going to be either moving uh, ulnarly or moving radially. And that's some of the arthrokinematics of the wrist and the hand.